Hello everyone, my name is Griff, and today we're going to be looking at both the Platinum Showcase, as well as the Water Focused, ah oh, sorry, yes, Water Attuned Adventure Focused Showcase. So this is called Water Focus. this is the showcase, as you can see we have the updated Mana Spirals and I have all the tabs open, so we're going to be looking at it through this because actually on this event, all um, current water units are available to get on this banner in the permanent pool. So I have the page open right here. Here are all the permanent five stars that are currently in the pool. So there's Eugene, uh, uh, Summer Selly, Xander, Valerio, Mitsuba, Lazari, Summer Julieta, Catherine, Zanefried, Lara Noah, Yur Urias, Lily, and Jengzia. So while you may be looking at this banner, and seeing that Valerio and uh, Catherine are shown to be on focus right now as like the two lead units, you actually don't have a better chance to get either of them compared to every other unit on the event. They actually have the exact same rates, they have the exact same um, like chance as a normal banner, as a normal banner they'd be on focus. However, the roster for this summon showcase does not include Ventures and Dragons other than the ones attuned to water, which means that everything you get will be from the water pool so if you specifically wanted one of these people one of these people um your chances of getting them i would say are probably better than a gala simply because the pool is so small like you get a five star you're just gonna probably end up with one of these and if i open the dragon tier list as well because the dragons are well on this tier list uh, let me see if I can find it if I go to the main page. The dragons are also on this tier list. Uh, are on this, um, rather on this banner. And I go to 5 star. You see that there's only... Oh, that's 3 star. You see that there's only 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. There's only 8 of them. So, your chances of getting one of these dragons are also very high because there's only 8 dragons. And some of the good dragons that are here are, uh, Siren. Um... I don't know how to pronounce these two names, but uh, I just call them G and C. G and C is one of the best dragons in the game for water. If I go and look at them quickly, um, you'll see this uh, water strength. If you use this unit strength, and increase strength by 45%. Uh, not bad at all. But this right here is really what does it for them. If the user is attuned to water, it fills 35% of the skill gauge after using that skill. Which means that your skill rotation is just going to be so much faster, it's going to be so much stronger. You're going to be getting your skills up way, way quicker. And in a meta where skill damage is really what you want, you know, that's something that really is important. And if I go and look at the DPS sim quickly right now, and I go to water, you're going to see that a majority of these characters here are running her. You know, Elisan is, Gal Elisan, Halloween Odetta, Eugene. Basically, I think everyone except people who really, really have skill damage, like Mitsuba, who's running Normal Siren. They're running G and C, as you can see here. Valeria runs uh, Siren as well. But I mean, a majority of units are running either G and C or Siren, and both of them are available on this current banner. Now, I will say there are some units that are not great on this banner. Kamui is not amazing. Samurg is, I mean, she's a healing dragon, so I mean, if that's something you need, she's an HP dragon with a healing skill. Poseidon is a 30-30 uh, dragon, means that he has half of his power goes to strength, half of it goes to HP. So if you're using like a ranged unit, that could potentially be good on him, but it's not really. Uh, Styx is very only good on certain units, as I've said in the ca past couple videos. I really don't like this dragon, but I think that they're alright. I, I, they have a few cases where they shine through. Um, one possible case could be Gala Elisayan, but really she wants GNC because she wants to get her heals and skills up faster. Uh, Nimus is... Uh, he's, he adds critical damage. He's kind of basically like uh, the Arctos of water. The problem is that no one in water really has stacking crit damage that much. So it's kind of hard for them to get up to a point where they really want a lot of skill, like a lot of critical rate. And that's really where he would excel is a chance where he could have a character who has a ton of crit rate. So, eh. Maybe if we get a future uh, dagger unit that is stacks crit rate like I was saying, I'm not uh, Ezalith, that'd be awesome, but we don't have one right now. 
Leviathan is the 60% strength dragon, and he also has a fog skill on on his like his main skill. This used to be really really good because um, you used to just be able to enable bog on break. But really, with the current water fights, this isn't needed because with Skillshare you can bring something like Summer Celiera's skill and have Bog. So that's something we'll look in when we get into these adventures. Um, Eugene, I've already gone over. He's pretty. Um, this is going to be actually just be a little like just look at these units very brief, except for the 70 MC. I'm going to quickly touch on the 70 MCs. Eugene recently just came out. He's alright. He uh, really wants to stack the skill 1 up, and then he used a uh, big modifier in his skill 2. I would say out of like 10, he's probably like a like a 6, honestly. He doesn't do that much. Some people run his uh, shared skill with like skill preference up, so you have that big modifier early, but honestly, it you don't really need it. Uh, Summer Celiera used to be not the best unit, but now with Skillshare, and especially with all the things that she can do with her bogging, and the fact that she doesn't have to have, um, like she doesn't have to save her bog. She's alright. I think that she's better for skill sharing. Honestly, I don't see a lot of her anymore. But I think that she's pretty good for what she does, which is skill sharing. Uh, Xander, I want to go over the new modifiers for him. Now, if you look at Xander's modifiers, I said yesterday that he was probably one of the most I was interested in on this banner. Like with the 70 MC. If you look at his modifiers, you notice that they don't go up by that much, but there are two things I want to talk about here. Um, for starters, he now has Frostbite, and it inflicts for 21 seconds, which I don't remember how good other people's Frostbite. If I look at Tiki's quickly, I don't think Tiki's lasts that long. Uh, oh, okay, so no, it lasts just as long as Tiki's. Okay, so... He is going to have a long frostbite enabling just based off his skill 1 in the first place. He's just going to have it like constantly up. Additionally, the thing that uh, this doesn't take into account, and this also applies to Karina, who I'm going to briefly touch on, because um, she has kind of the same case where their modifiers don't look like they're going up by that much. There are two big things about this. One, frostbite punisher is now enabled it within their kits regardless. So now you can run a frostbite punisher on them. The second thing is that both of his skills rely on buffs, and you're thinking, alright, well that's kind of a weird thing to say because, you know, you're not usually having all that buffs. Water is by far, in my personal opinion, the most buff-heavy element. Like, every element to me has a niche, and Waters is, like... <laughs> Every comp you're going to have, you're going to have someone who has a lot of buffing skills, whether it's Gala of Sand, whether it's Pipple, whether it's, you know, Karina, whether it's, um, Zhang Zi. You know, there are so many units in water that just, by existing buff, I mean, the two new units we just got put down buffs. Like, Eugene and Catherine both put down buff zones and buff the team, so like... I mean, well, you, Catherine doesn't put down buffs, but she does buff herself, and Eugene is putting down a buff zone. So it's like, you know, that's something that on paper, it doesn't look that important, but in practice, it's probably one of the most important things that they added that to his kit, even though they didn't make his mods crazy insane. Um, honestly, still, he's probably one of the units I want to invest in the most, but uh, while I'm talking about some of these MCs, we're not going to get to her a little bit, but... um. I might as well just talk about them now. Lily's 70 MC, as I was saying, you know, they upped this by about 100. Not even by 100, they've upped it by like 40, my bad. Upped it by 45, but it involves a hit over 1,000. And then this, they buffed by like 100, and it allows it to now have 10,000. But the thing that's really important about this effect is it now is increases the skies of the effect to 6. And you may be saying, okay, that's weird. What does that mean? That means it is six units in radius. And that might also sound weird, but basically if you lined up six lilies in a line and you put them in every direction going out of lily, that's how big her skills are now. And it is roughly the size of, um, like, if lily's standing in the bottom of the material gauntlet area, it's roughly all the way to Roy and then all the way out to the walls. So this is a massive, massive, massive skill. You're making her skills ginormous. And what this is really going to affect 
is going to affect the first stage of Aya and Otoko's fight, because during the first phase of that fight, they are two different units, and they can be hit twice by most skills because if they're each of them have a hitbox, so you can stack damage pretty much throughout the entire thing. One of the reasons why Tiki's so good in that fight is one, because she's defensive, but two, because she can frostbite them and then do her dive, and it basically just does double damage. Lily is going to be doing the exact same thing now, where she's just going to be doing double damage to all those units. And if we look at the DPS sim, and I look at, uh, Lily is now all the way up here. You know, it's not, it's not as high as, uh, Saint Freeze, but I believe that this is a, uh, this is amplified for buffing. If I go down to the normal amount, they usually have it set at. Yeah. So we see that Karina's up here now. Lily's up here now. She's just under Catherine, you know, she's, it's not amazing, but for what it is, she really got a gigantic buff in this sense of that she is able to now do these skills in a ginormous way, and I think that the DPSM really isn't considering the fact that uh, Io and Atoko are going to be hit twice by most things. So that's something to focus on. As you see, Xander's kind of down here, but again, this isn't factoring in. Neither this, uh, neither him or Karina are factoring in the fact that uh, buffs are added in. So realistically, he is way higher up on here. I think he's probably about equal with Karina, if not higher. In my personal opinion, these are all buff characters, except for Mitzvah, she just has insane DPS, but these are all mostly buff characters, so keep that in mind. Um, there's not much to say about Richard and uh, Zardin, and Luther kind of got washed out by this, he didn't get that much. He got enough mods to make his first skill do 1k, which is pretty good, and he got enough mods to make his second skill do about 800, which is pretty good as well, but I mean... Honestly, I wouldn't recommend investing in him. I'm actually not going to. I thought I was going to, but I'm probably not going to be. It's just because there are better ways to spend this materials. I can spend it on Lily or on Xander. Um, looking at the other units, though, Valerio, he was a, he's the only 5-star water blade in the pool, I believe. So he has a stance. He's a, both him and Mitzvah are stance characters, which means that they uh, switch between these stances on the right side of the screen. And they can do things like fog. They can do things like frostbite. They can do things like freeze. And... That helps in a lot where uh, I and Natoho um, reset their affliction a lot whenever they do the Let's Play skill. So you can get freezes out, you can get fogs out pretty quickly with both of them. Lazarin, she's an axe unit. She also has um, these stances. And she's also really good in I and Natoho. So if you're looking for a unit for that, she's really cool. She's also one of the units that was focused on in the uh, event story for the Smithing Sisters. So if you have a connection to that event, pretty good. Summer Julieta was one of the more sleeper units when she first came out because she was, um, I believe she was, yeah, she's stun res and she uh, really focused on fog equals team strength, which I mean, at the beginning when she first came out, we were talking about Hybrid Hoda and Hybrid Hoda could only be bogged once. Well, now we're in a fight where we can bog, not indefinitely, but you can get a lot of bogs out during this fight because they reset their reflection guard. So now she is adding a lot of uh, utility to the team just in general based off what she's doing by just by existing. Catherine, I've already gone over. Super good DPS unit. You know, you look at the DPS him, she's like top 10 in water. So she's she's fine the way she is right now. Uh, where is this? Here it is. Uh, Zanefried, he was a pretty bad unit at the start of the game, but now that he has his 70 MC, he's one of the better water units. As you can see, he's right up here. And you can see that actually Eugene's buff him, but he's also considering buffing. So you just something to think about. These buffing characters look really high, but you have to just get into the fact that they are buffing. People have to be in your buff zone for the most of the game something to think about. Uh, Laranoa, honestly I wouldn't recommend summoning if you're trying to get Laranoa. She is not that great of a unit, just in general. Urius, he was kind of recently added, but at this point 70 MC Lily is better than him um, by about 2k DPS. But I mean still, he is a Dragon Draft character, which means that he doesn't have a Dragon Transformation, and he does do a lot of skill damage, and he also is a Frat Vice enabler. So that's something to think about. He's alright. Uh, Lily, as I already gone over, super, super good uh, DPS unit now, especially with the size of her skills. And Zhongzi is the best water healer in the game currently. Um, she just has a gigantic heal on her skill 1, 108 recovery frequency, that's awesome. And her skill 2 is both a uh, regen ability and it increases strength, uh, sorry, it increases defense by 20%. So, oh, also her skill 1 removes burning. This will equal about to uh, 1,700 in practice, and this is about 500 a tick. So, you know, 
boat, she's just super good. She's the best water healer in the game. The only thing is that you might not need a healer on Ayana Toho. Some people are running three comps, some people are uh, four DPS comps, some people are running Grace, because you can bring Grace. That's just something to think about. But if you need a water healer, she is by far the best in the game currently. So yeah, that's my impressions of this banner. Uh, I would really only summon on these focus type of banners if you literally have no good water units at all. If you're sitting with just like four stars, or you just have like Laranoa, I would consider summoning. Just because you, you, whatever you're gonna get is gonna be an increase. You're probably gonna get something good just due to the fact that like more than half of the units and more than half of the dragons are pretty good. So I would say if you really don't have any water units, this would be a good time to summon if you have a lot of water units. If you have a lot of limited water units like Tiki and Halloween Cerise and Galvao San, I wouldn't recommend summoning because really those three are probably going to be in your team slots anyway, so you really only need one other water unit, so that's just something to think about. Um, I definitely wouldn't do the Platinum Summon because it's, okay, the Platinum Summon for this one is just a 5 star of the water pool no guarantee on who it's going to be. It could be even be a dragon. I'm pretty sure. Does it say it's an adventure? Something. Okay, so it is... Sorry, it is an adventure. Okay, so that's something to think about. But I mean, there's no guarantee on who it's going to be. If you have a lot of them, you know, it could be literally any of them. Any of the people on this list right here. So it's not a good shot if you're like, oh, I really want Urius. I'm going to do that. I wouldn't do that because there's like a one in what... There's a 1 in 13 chance of getting him. So, yeah. That's going to be all it for me. Thank you all so much for watching. Uh, make sure to like and subscribe. And I will see you next time.